Okay, folks, uh, in view of the fact that uh, in the second group I did this problem and somehow uh, uh, I couldn't finish it, I'm going to redo this problem uh, once again and put it on blackboard. Uh, this is the telescopic mechanism. It's made of uh, three parts. This is the big tube, this is the small tube, and this is the path. But in the path I have created uh, this point which is the center some some location in the same plane and uh, a point down here now that point down here in, in the path is going to create a spherical joint with uh, the the point at the bottom of this uh, uh, big tube okay and uh, i have to create a prismatic between the big tube and the small tube and finally a point curve joint between the top of the small tube and the path you will see the significance of this point later. It's not obvious. So let's do the, uh, the, uh, the assembly constraints. First of all, I use the anchor to uh, anchor the, the, the path. And then coincidence between the point down here at the bottom of the path and uh, the point at the bottom of the big tube. This is going to become spherical joint. Okay? Uh, coincidence axis of the small tube and the axis of the big tube and uh, I'll, I'll just uh, drag this thing out so that you can see what what happened to the small tube is actually hiding there okay then uh, right now if I create a joint this becomes cylindrical but I don't want cylindrical I want prismatic because otherwise there is an extra degree of freedom which is a spinning of the inside of tube uh, uh, in the the big tube so the easiest way to do this is uh, you create a coincidence between the plane, a vertical plane of the tube and a vertical plane of the uh, big tube, okay? Small tube and the big tube. So coincidence between the, uh, the vertical plane, say the exit plane of the, uh, of the big tube and uh, the exit plane or YZ plane of the small tube. This will become a prismatic later on. All right. So uh, finally, I want to put this point on that curve. So coincidence between this point and that curve, and uh, that'll do it. Now we can use the move, uh, uh, move and manipulate uh, uh, icon to drag this thing to make sure constraints are holding. So I'm going to check this box, and then I'm going to drag, for example, uh, the tube around. Oh, uh, okay. There is a problem here. That does not work. Uh, that, that's okay. Let's go and create our, our, our joints. Uh, so, uh, uh, DMU kinematic, uh, DMU kinematics, get the magic wand out, create a mechanism. Okay, and let's see what kind of joints we have. We have a spherical between the path and the big tube. That's this one down here. We have a prismatic between the big tube and the small tube. That's what we want. And we have a spherical. We have a spherical up here that was created because I coincided the point and that part. That, this one, first of all, I don't want. That, that, that's why this is not moving. It was not moving when I was trying to uh, drag it. So I'm going to delete this, delete this particular one, okay? And then create a point curve between that point and the path. Point curve between that path and this point. Okay. Now the degree of freedom is two. I can make it one by making this an angle or length driven, uh, length -driven uh, joint. But there is an extra persistent degree of freedom somehow I have to get rid of. And I did talk about this thing in class. <clears throat> the reason is that basically the, 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 the assembly of the big tube and the small tube can spin about that spherical point and this point curve joint. And the trick is to make sure that uh, 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 this spinning does not take place. And the way I fixed that was uh, going to uh, assembly design, back to assembly design. 
and make sure that a vertical plane, a vertical plane of either the big tube or the small tube passes through this center point that seem to be uh, useless and having no function. So I'm going to make a coincidence between this plane, this is the wiser plane of the big tube, and that point. What it does, it, it, it uh, spins that so that that concern is met, okay? Now let us go back to, uh, uh, let us go back to uh, uh, DMU. And this point curve joint, still degree of freedom is, is, is one. So uh, we're going to create a point surface joint, a point surface joint between that YZ plane of the big two and the point is that center point. And we say, okay. And it says mechanism can be simulated and we can check it by dragging this thing right there let's reset it and create a, a cartoon here mechanism one drag this thing all the way to the end insert rewind and make it play continuously okay so this worked in the first class and then uh, this is the second second group uh, we must have done something uh, uh, something wrong and it didn't quite work uh, but anyway there it is okay so the, so the trick for taking that one extra persistent degree of freedom was to create a point surface joint between a proper plane of the big two and that point which was created in the plane of the uh, of, of the uh, the path uh, which didn't seem to have any reason in function but 